Okay, let's get started, the next parameter that we are going to explore is plasticity. Now let me show you what example I have prepared then we'll talk in detail about plasticity. See, I animated the tube and set it as a collision geometry which pushes the box. To make the box stand so firmly, I increased the bend stiffness and added a few sub-step. That's all I did, everything else is by default. Now let's talk about plasticity. In vellum, when an object is bent or stretched, it returns to its original rest shape. When plasticity effects are turned on, once an object is bent past a certain threshold, it will maintain a new rest shape. There are three important plasticity parameters that will control the plasticity behavior of your simulation. The plasticity threshold means that once deformed past this value, the geometry will begin to take its new configuration. Below this threshold, the material will return to its original shape. The rate value determines the speed at which the geometry will adopt its new shape. About hardening we'll talk a little later. Now let's put 5 for rate and check what we get with plasticity. See, all deformations that have exceeded the specified threshold no longer try to return to the original shape. It is also important to know that the threshold is an absolute angle measurement. Well, now I suggest increasing the threshold, then turning on the plastic flow visualizer and have a look. Here we also have to set 20 to have the correct visualization. See, where it turned red, the maximum plastic flow triggered, and since this time we have increased the threshold value, only large deformations remained, everything else returned. If you increase the threshold even more, then the deformation will persist less and less until it disappears completely. But we will do the opposite, lower the threshold to preserve more deformation. We also need to adjust the max bend plastic flow. Look, this time almost all the deformation has been preserved, since the threshold value is small. Okay, now I suggest playing with the rate parameter and see what changes. Let's put 1 and check the result. Look, although almost everything turned red, most of the deformation returned, because we reduced the rate at which the material takes on new rest angles during flow. Now let's disable the plastic flow visualization, then reduce the rate value even more, and look again. See, a very small percentage of deformation remains, it is barely noticeable. It turns out that, if we set rate to zero, nothing will be preserved, everything will go back, as if we didn't turn on plasticity. Conversely, if you put a large value, it will immediately assume a new angle of rest, which means all deformation above the specified threshold will be preserved. So, let's check. As you can see, it instantly takes on a new rest angles. Good, you can also scale all these parameters with the point attribute or manipulate them inside the dot network during simulation. Well, now let's do the following. When the tube pushes the box the first time, the deformation will not preserve at all, and when it pushes the second time, it retains all the deformation. It turns out at the beginning we need zero rate, and then we have to increase it already inside the DOP network. Let's drop down the vellum constraint properties node. Connect to the force output then specify the bend constraint. Look, there are all plasticity parameters, and we can manipulate each of them, but now we are only interested in the plastic rate. Let's put a 100, then we set the conditions for activating the vellum constraint properties node, and the condition will be as follows. If current frame greater than 80, then activate the node. That is after 80 frames the rate value will be overwritten. Okay, let's check the result. As you can see, after frame 80, all deformation is preserved. Well, now let's manipulate the threshold instead of the rate. So, let's put 10 here, then increase the threshold decently, and dive inside the DOP network.
Here, let's revert to default the rate value and turn it off altogether. Then turn on the threshold and set 5. The activation conditions remain the same, that is up to frame 80, the threshold will be 20, and after it will be 5. Ok, now let's check what we got. Look, at the first collision, only a small part of the deformation is preserved, since the threshold value is quite large. In the second collision, almost all deformation is preserved, since the threshold value is quite low. Well, now it's time to talk about hardening, and for this I have prepared a good example file, so let's switch there. Ok, first let me introduce you to an example file, that we will be using soon. So, I just pinned the upper points to make it hang, and animated the collision geometry. As for the vellum settings, slightly increased the bend stiffness, as well as damping ratio, and added 5 substeps, that's all I did. Good, now let's enable the plasticity. So, let's decrease the threshold, then increase decently the rate, as for hardening, let's leave one for now, and check how it looks, and only then we'll play with it. As you can see the deformation was not preserved at all, since the bend constraint does not have enough stiffness to keep the deformation, and in such cases the hardening parameter is very useful. So, let's increase the hardening value a little, and look again. Now some amount of the deformation has been preserved, as the hardening value above one increases the stiffness when plastic flow is triggered. It is simply a logarithmic multiplier on stiffness. Let's increase the hardening further and see what we get. Now it gains stiffness very quickly, and therefore does not wrinkle so much, since stiffness resists bending. But we can do a little differently, increase the hardening after wrinkling occurs. So, now let's set it back to 1, and then dive into the dot net. Here, drop down the vellum constraint properties, connect to force output, and specify the bend constraint. Then turn on the plastic hardening, and put a 10. Now let's set the conditions for activating this node after frame 80. So, let's see what we get as a result. Look, the deformation is completely preserved. That is, before the frame 80, it has a small stiffness, and therefore wrinkles when colliding. However, after frame 80 the stiffness increases sharply, which helps preserve all the wrinkles. Ok, now let's look at another case, when the hardening value is less than 1. For this I have prepared another example, let's switch there. Well, let me show you what an example. I just pinned the bottom points of this geometry, and animated the tube that pushes it. To keep the geometry so solid, I increased the bend stiffness and also added a 5 substeps. That's all. So, now let's turn on the plasticity, and set it up. Put 5 for the threshold, 100 for the rate. As for the hardening, while we leave 1 and check the result. As you can see, now all deformations are preserved, which is quite expected. So, now let's decrease the hardening value, and see what happens. See, where the deformation exceeds the given threshold, there the stiffness gradually decreases, and as a result, it collapses. If we reduce hardening value even more, then it will lose its stiffness much faster, and as a result will collapse earlier. Well, let's do it. Set 0.5 for hardening, and check the result. As I expected it collapsed much faster. If we completely zero out the hardening value, then the bend stiffness will instantly reset to zero in places where the plastic flow will trigger. That's it. And also in places, where the deformation did not exceed the specified threshold, the stiffness remained the same. Good, with plasticity we have completely figured out, 
We also fully discovered all the properties of the bend constraint. So, now I want to show you how you can create an additional bend constraint and get additional stiffness at the desired location of the geometry, and for this I have prepared another example, let's switch there. Okay, let me show you an example that we'll work on. I just pinned the top points of this geometry, and it just hangs out of them, and as for the constraint properties, I only increased the bend damping ratio, and the stretch damping ratio. In the solver settings I just added 5 sub-steps. So, now let's drop down the second vellum constraint node. Insert it between the solver and vellum configure cloth. The constraint type must be the bend across triangles. You see? These are the familiar bend constraint properties. That is now there are two of them. For this one, let's set the maximum stiffness value, as well as increase the damping ratio. So, now we need to specify the region where we want the second bend constraint to be generated. Select the primitives on the basis of which the constraints will be built, then hit enter. Well, let's put the display flag on the second bend constraint, just to see the constraint primitives. Look, here they are. To see better, let's isolate the constraint stream. Connect the constraint output to the null, then temporarily disable the first bend constraint. Here we go, now it is clearly seen that they were created only on a specified region, that is, now we have an additional bend constraint here. Okay. Now let's check how it will affect the simulation. You see, where we added an additional band constraint, there the stiffness is much higher than in other places, and therefore the folds are not transformed there, and the beauty of that is that we can manipulate it separately from the first bend constraint, and it has its own properties. So, for example, let's remove it after a certain frame. For this we need to enable the output group, then change the name, so that it is not in the same group with the main bend constraint. Now let's drop down the vellum constraint properties node. Connect to the force output, then specify the second band constraint. To remove the specified constraint geometry, we need to enable the remove option, which is a pseudo property that will cause the constraint to be removed immediately when set to 1. We can just animate this parameter and make it one when we need to remove the constraint. Or we can leave one and activate the node when we need to remove constraint geometry. So let's activate it after frame 90 and check the result. As you notice the constraints were removed after frame 90, therefore the geometry began to unfold into folds. Let's look once again from the bottom view. That's it, now it was more noticeable. Okay, now let's isolate the second bend constraint after vellum solver and see what happens to it. Now we see all the constraints together, let's blast them all and only leave the second bend constraint. Select bend 2, then check delete non selected. Now move the time slider and watch it. Look, after frame 90 the geometry of the constraint is removed. And finally, I propose to do a slightly different manipulation with second bend constraint. Instead of removing let's animate its bend stiffness. Set the stiffness to maximum here, then disable simulation temporarily and start animating the stiffness value. Look, I created this simple animation, at the beginning the stiffness is zero, then it goes up to the maximum, and down again to zero and back to the maximum. Well, now let's check the result. Don't forget to delete the expression that activates this node, since in this case the node must always be active. So, now let's enable the simulation and check what we have. see how the stiffness varies in that region. To make it clearer, let's look from the bottom.
That's it, we figured out everything regarding to the bend constraint, and with this I suggest to finish this lesson. In the next lesson we will already discovered the stretch constraint. See you in the next lesson.